Making plans. Put it into practice. I tell you, I keep telling people all the time, half the stuff I wrote was written 10, 12 years ago, and God has allowed me to preach it now. Amen? But if I hadn't have written it 10, 12 years ago, I wouldn't have been prepared for it. And he couldn't have used me. Amen? Because during those times of writing and preparing, he was working my best out of me. Uh -huh. Amen? So that by the time I stood before you, I was what? Blameless. Amen. Amen? But at the time I was writing, I was getting hot. Wow, that's deep. Man, look at that revelation. Writing my tail off, getting hot. Man! God knows that and why I can't stand up here doing that and try to teach you something. Amen? I'm just being the truth. I'm just telling the truth. I know it's funny. <laughs> I know it's funny. I like what Park Ranger said today. He said when he was smoking cigarettes, he said he had more of the Holy Ghost in him at that time, and God was speaking to him more when he was smoking cigarettes than when he stopped because he had conformed himself to religiosity. Ain't that something? So God was speaking to him more while he was in his sin Amen. than when he became blameless. So ain't God speaking to you? It's called conviction. It's called the gratuity. It's called the Holy Ghost who is talking to you, telling you, I love you. Stop. Amen. I'm in you now. I belong inside. So don't think it's, you know, love that conviction. Man, I feel bad. Good. Because if you didn't, you ain't saying it.
Most folk are sitting down when they're in doubt. Or they give. But you know what? It's funny. I see a lot of different people, and I'm not picking on you. I'll just give my experience. I know brothers in the crack houses who were lawyers, who were doctors, who were gifted brothers. You know what I mean? And they were just sitting there. And I couldn't understand why they were just sitting there. You know what I mean? Wasting their gift. You don't need a gift to sit. You need the gift to do some work. <laughs> the endowment of power is for service. So the gifts of the Spirit are called manifestations or endowments or miraculous faculties. You know, we get a lot of brothers who just sit there and talk about what they're going to do and how they're going to do it. You remember that old commercial where you see the pothead and they sit in the room and they smoke? Talking about, I get up tomorrow. Then the mama comes, yeah, ma! <laughs> it just sucks your strength out. <laughs> Don't let the devil suck your strength out of you. Amen? Amen. Mm. All right, what is the purpose of the gift? Gifts are used to strengthen the body of Christ. We ought to take our gifts and minister one to another. We already looked at 1 Peter 4, 10 for them. To profit or enrich for the common good. That was in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7. To edify or build a house for yourself, because you're the house. You're the house of God. Your gifts should be building you. Amen? Amen. And we saw that in, uh, if you want to write that down, it's 1 Corinthians 14, verse 26, and uh, verse 12. You don't need the endowment for you. Because all of you got a present salvation. And you see, I keep going over this. All you, I want y'all to get how this thing works. You get a free present or offering from God. Then you've got the tip of the Holy Ghost. And you don't need no more than that. And I want to say that. See what I just said? If you just accept the present and the gratuity or the tip of God, guess what? If you don't want to work in your uh, gift of endowment, it's not prerequisite for salvation. You want to work for your gift so that you can have some crowns to lay at Jesus' feet. Amen. Or you just want to make it in. But I can't understand how somebody would just want the free present and the gratuity and don't want to work for God. If you got that, you automatically want to work for God in your gift. Amen? You just, it just comes natural. It should. Got to. Got to. Amen. Amen. Kids. Amen. And you don't need no more than that because the tip takes care of your personal. Everything you need is wrapped up in salvation, the present, and the Holy Ghost, the tip. So if God never gave you an endowment, you will still be taken care of because of the present and the tip given to you by God. Amen. Amen. Here we go. Miracles are work among us. We need to understand that miracles work among us. And now let's look at the gifts of the church. Y'all ready for the gifts of the church? How much time ago? Y'all ready for the gifts of the church? All right. For those of you who never knew how the gifts in the church operate, Amen. I'm going to get a little deep. I hope I don't cover it too much. I have talked about this before. So for those of you who want to grab it, let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. I was praying about this earlier today. I said, God, please let me convey this. You know, I've said this around here before. Everybody know, anybody ever heard of the five-fold ministry? Mm -hmm. You ever heard of that term, five-fold ministry? I've explained that before, and I'm going to explain it again so that you can see some manifestation of your gifts. Amen? Ephesians chapter 4, and looking at verse 11 and 12. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers to do what? For the perfecting of the saints. Y'all the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the who? Body of Christ. All right, go back to 11. You see apostles. You see, well, apostles. You see prophets. You see evangelists. You see pastors. And you see teachers. Five-fold ministry. Now, look at my hand. Greatest example. The thumb is the apostle. Why? He's called sent one. Apostles are sent to build and establish churches. I even feel an apostolic anointing. To you ever hear my prayer every week is to God help me to establish, build, and guide the men and women of God. Y'all hear me say that every week? Because I don't want to trust in me. But that's what apostles do. So watch this. Why are they apostles? Because they can touch every ministry. You see how that thumb can touch each finger? You see that? 
That's why he's a sit one. Paul was an apostle. He was sitting all over the place to do what? Build churches. Right. Prophet. What does the prophet do? Prophets and apostles are the most loneliest people in the world. A lot of them stay single all their life because they are so vexed and, and, and wanting to do the service of God that most of the time their mates can't understand them. Hello. <laughs> they just can't understand it. And they're always attacked. But a prophet will always point you away from sin. He prophesies to you. He don't always say, brother, you're going to get a million dollars. No, he should be saying, brother, the Lord says stay away from sin or he's going to kill you. He warns you. Watch the camera. He warns you away from sin. That's what the prophet does. So if you've got a prophet always telling you, God said he's going to bless you. You know you've been living a, a sinful life. No, he's seen that. You know yourself better than that. And the way you confront a prophet is when the prophet comes to you to tell you something that God said, God told you first. He just coming along to confirm what God already said. Amen. And prophets warn you out of sin. Amen. So if the prophet come up and tell you something and God ain't told you, question that prophet. The Bible says test all prophets. Test it. I have a hard time receiving a lot of prophetic stuff over here. Because the apostle and prophet always fight. Amen. They always battle in the body. I don't know why. If they ever two ever come together, boy, the Lord, we'd be some child. Then you got the evangelist. I'm not cussing. Middle figure. You know why he's middle figure? Because the evangelist goes to front us. What does that mean by that? The evangelist wins souls. Everybody in this room who is born again is called an evangelist. You need to know you're supposed to evangelize. The moment Jesus came into your heart, you're supposed to tell somebody what Jesus did for you. That's called evangelizing. Now, the evangelist preaches to a great uh, crowd of people, but everybody's called to evangelize. Got me? And watch this. You will know he's a good evangelist because he'll walk up to you and tell you something about your past that you know only God and you knew about. Amen. Hmm. That's called a temporal gift. So the evangelist is full of a temporal gift to tell you, you know, sister, I saw you when you were three years old, and I knew you were sick, and all of a sudden you woke up that morning and it was done. How'd you know that? You don't even know what anymore. Exactly. Amen. Then you know that's God. Amen. 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 Then you got the teacher. He's detailed. Well, I'm sorry, back up. The pastor. The pastor. He's married to the church. Green finger. So that means he wants to nurture you. You know what I mean? The pastor wants to nurture you, and he will discipline you too. Amen? Then you got the teacher. Insignificant. Pinky. That's my call. See? See how important he is? Insignificant pinky, but he's detailed. Anytime you want to get something done right, you can get it out. Right? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> that pinky will work for you. But watch this. Y'all saw that the apostle, Thumb, can touch every ministry. How many can the prophet touch? He can touch the evangelist and the apostle. Mm -hmm. See that? So a person talking about, I'm going to go over here, I'm a prophet, and I want to go over here and pastor and teach. It's hard to go there. It's like awkward, isn't it? But the teacher can be the pastor. And the pastor can also be the evangelist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if you got a man of God that says he flows in all five of these anointings, he's lying. It's only one man that walked the earth that flowed in all five of these anointings. His name is who? Jesus. Jesus. Now I can see the pastor flowing in, flowing in the uh, evangelist and the teacher. I can see the prophet flowing in the evangelist, and I can see the prophet flowing in the apostle. You see how it's going? Mm -hmm. But ain't no way in the world that you say they all are. I got a question here. I got a question. Did y'all get something out of that? Yeah. Now y'all understand what the fivefold ministry is. And you're wrapped up in one of these people. Which one are you? Which one do you desire to be? Which one do you have a vision to be? Because the prophet visions. He has dreams. He has great vision. The apostle has, he's like an architect. He's ready to build. The evangelist is ready to travel and just help and minister. You know, the pastor's ready to sit down and nurture you and just be married to you. Ain't it wonderful to have a husband and wife that would just rock you and go off in trouble? Amen. Then you have a teacher who don't know how to give you all the information you need to help you grow. Amen. 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 Let's go to Romans 12. So now y'all know the five-fold ministry. I, love that, I mean, that is a very wide open area, and there are some people who agree, and there are some people who disagree. Amen. Amen. Study it for yourself. Amen. <laughs> Study it for yourself. Romans 12, verse 6 
says what? Having been gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the what? Portion of faith. So trust your faith. Know that God is with you in this thing. Amen? Amen. And just ask God to show you. Watch this. Go to Acts 13. Come on, we're doing a lot of Bible verses this evening. Acts 13. Y'all miss me jumping around the Bible anyway, don't you? Now watch this one. Acts 13 and 1 says what? Now, there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and what? Teachers as Barnabas and Simon that was called Niger. Okay? Niger and what's that? Lucius and the Cyrenian and Menin which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetra, uh, and Saul. All I'm showing you is that there's those gifts. There's those gifts. I, mean, I can go into heavy detail here. The Holy Spirit told me not to. But, <laughs> but I don't want to cover that too much. I'm going to move on. Let's go to 1 first, first Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm just showing you the gifts in the church. Okay? These are people who have gifts in the church. And you have gifts in the church. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 20. And watch this. It says, despise not prophesy. But let's go up a little bit. The Holy Spirit just told me to go up because there's a great recipe here. Let's go to verse 15. See that none render what? Evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is what? Good. Both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. The way you want to defeat the enemy is you've got to wake up with an attitude of rejoicing. spiritual. You know, I mean, if it, if it offends you, that's you. But I like the laugh. I watch Family Guy. I love the laugh. I think God gets a kick out of them making fun of him and Jesus the way they do. Because it is funny. Ain't it funny to see Jesus riding in a limousine with two horses? It's funny. God sitting up in heaven with a babe. Now, if you saw religious, it's no work for good. You know God ain't doing that.
Now watch this one. Quench not the spirit. What did we just talk about? You don't quench the continuity. How can you accept this president and not have to go It's impossible. It ain't no way in the world you can tell me you are born again and believe in Jesus Christ and there's no Holy Ghost in you. You just quench the spirit. That's why when the scripture says, confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe now that God is raised from the dead, all I hear is your mouth saying, I believe in Jesus. But only God knows what the heart condition You can say, I know Jesus all day long. I said I knew Jesus before I got saved. You know? Then I found out, I didn't know. I had no clue who the heck he was. I just heard somebody say, believe Jesus. Amen. And I said, that's what I'm going to do while I'm smoking weed, smoking crack, sleep with all different women, going out to the club, and professing Jesus. Give me a break. It just ain't going to work. Amen? Amen. Amen. Despise not prophesying. Despise not the words that are coming your way. Verse 21. Prove all things. See that? Remember I just heard prove all prophecies? Prove all things. Prove all things. And hold fast to that which is good. Amen. And watch this one. Abstain. Verse 22. Abstain from all appearances of evil. No one should see you doing evil. If you can help it. <laughs> Amen. But he said abstain from it. And I don't just mean, I got more phony people who will appear to be nice. Amen. Who will appear to be good Christians. Mm. Who will appear to be so on the money. Mm. But you catch them on a real good day, maybe five seconds after they walk by, you see they're the most evil. And I'm talking about Christians. I ain't talking about I read the Bible. Generation to generation. We 
We stop. <laughs>